Welcome back boys and girls. In this video, we're going to be talking not so good things about keyed services in ASP.NET Core. I personally, I don't use keyed services. I don't like them. I don't think they're good. So in this video, I'm going to try to explain my point, why I think they're not good and uh, what are my alternatives? Uh, what would I be doing if I didn't have keyed services, right? So as always, if you're enjoying the video, leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. If you think there is anything I missed, well, that's crucial about keyed services, please leave it in the comment. Okay, thank you. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and get started here. I have a super, super, super simple application. Uh, we have a bunch of services that we're registering. So an interface, left, right, uh, the implementation itself doesn't matter so much. And then we have a delegate here, which accepts a direction, which is a, an enum, and it's going to return an interface. Okay. So uh, in program CS, we just register left and right to demonstrate a point. We then reserve the uh, result, uh, reserve, uh, resolve the left and right under those interfaces under the keys. So this is where we're using keyed services. Okay. We then have the directory factory, which is effectively the thing that I would ultimately use instead of keyed services. And then we have a bunch of talking points and a couple of more talking points. Okay. So uh, let's start with the bad. What are some of the things that keyed services straight out of the gate is not good. It's like it's not shining good for it. OK, and the reason I'm going to talk about is uh, basically the whole argument is premised on less is better. More code means more bugs, more things to learn means they should come with value. OK, so what value do keyed services bring? as a new concept that we have to learn that we shouldn't really have to learn. Okay. So uh, let's see what um, keyed services give you and what do they enforce upon you? So they enforce upon you a dependency. So this uh, from keyed service attributes, you know, it comes from this uh, namespace. If you just have a simple library, you're trying to use keyed services, your code's not going to compile. Now you have to, you know, uh, get an appropriate library to use it. So that's the very first thing. The second thing is, if you notice over here, we're using strings uh, for resolving these services. You don't have to use strings. You can use enums, you can use objects. The problem is, is that that's not really enforced at the point of wiring things up. Whereas if you have something like a factory, you can say, okay, direction dot write. And uh, over here, you know, I can go ahead and write poop. Nobody's going to stop me here. Uh, the compiler stop you. So when would you like to know that your code is going to break at uh, compile time or at runtime? Okay. I prefer compile time. So the earlier, the better for me, this approach is well, uh, just better. So the first problem of dependency isn't, you know, you can get around it. It's not really a problem if you're only using it in ESP.NET Core applications, not a problem. The second static typing, you know, it's a little bit more severe. So after that, we can get into, let's say, a philosophical debate about uh, uh, we're depending on an interface, but then we're still tied to the actual implementation. So, you know, we're not actually decoupled. So why are we just not supplying the correct class? Uh, if we would go ahead and create a new class like up and uh, we would have forgotten to implement an interface and uh, we would have a a method like moveth on it and not move and we would simply go ahead and replace all the code downstream would break okay however if we're depending on an interface there is no chance of the code downstream breaking so that's the reason why you'd want an interface now again this is what keyed services give you, but you already have a tool that can give you. You can supply a factory that can resolve a service uh, based on an enum so you, it gets statically type checked you will get an interface on the back of it. And if you basically change the key and the key is valid, all the functionality downstream is not going to break. OK, so another argument with this. And by the way, personally, I feel like I am disciplined enough to. If I'm implementing another up where I'm going to replace a left with, I know that I'm going to look Okay, what interfaces is this using? to put on those uh, classes that I'm implementing more of. So what I'm saying is, uh, personally, I would actually prefer to just inject the type if I have something like this, because I'm using this type over here. OK, I don't need to do all of this. So then there is the testing crowd, right? 
you need an interface to test. No, you don't. There are libraries powerful enough to mock the class and not just an interface. And if you're using a factory like this, the amount of code that you need to write to test, so let's say you have a new mock whatever, with the, what's it called? With the factory, your code's gonna look something like this, right? So you will be adding about Yamage code and you're not taking on, taking on this new concept of uh, deed services, okay? So I think at this point, I've talked about like the little nuances, the things that don't really matter, decoupling, you know, you think you're decoupling, you're not really decoupling, are you supplying the right type, uh, you know, a little bit of st uh, static type checking. Uh, I don't think any of these things really impact uh, things in the grand scheme of uh, I'm building a system, are these things ultimately gonna stop something in the future, which uh, is gonna prevent me from building a great system, a flexible system, somewhere where I can reuse as much components as possible, okay? So the worst thing I think about keyed services is, for example, if I have a class that is used in many places, and generally I think it's a flaw of dependency injection and really what there, there are times you need to step away from the dependency injection container and from dependency injection and say look i need something a little bit more powerful of how my services are being put together and fun what functionality i should get right so dependency injection is just not going to give you the control of saying look uh, today i want uh, uh, this and uh, the other day i want that right uh, this is compile time. If I would need this service with left or this service with right, I would have to create wrappers and I would have to supply them with different implementations or I would have to make them key services themselves and show how they resolve here, okay? So again, that's gonna be just unneeded ceremony to make something work that, uh, you know, you could have just made work. For me, not having hands on the constructor really prevents me from uh, using patterns like chain of responsibility, composition patterns, and uh, for God's sakes, uh, the strategy pattern, right? Well, one of the most useful patterns, like the strategy pattern. I want to do the same process, but with a different thing in the middle, right? Just dependency injection in general takes away that control from you, okay? You have to, you have to use some kind of factory where you have your own manual assembly process, okay? So moving past what I just talked about, does that mean keyed services can go in the bin altogether? No, uh, there is a way that I think is uh, desirable to use them and that is if you're doing dynamic service resolution where then you can just use a string, all right? It's just as easier to use a string than to, for example, if you need to re really just have a string to type mapping and then casting, uh, this is just going to be easier to resolve a service based on a string dynamically. I would not use keyed services to mark up the services at compile time. I would use this feature for dynamically reserving, uh, resolving services at runtime. I think this is the best where it shines. However, obviously you can still use a factory with the same effect. So my stance is I don't want to learn this new keyed services concept. I don't see the usefulness in it. It, for me, it doesn't bring anything to the table. It ties me more to the dependency injection container, which in turn, as I talked about with all these patterns, actually takes control of, away from me. And that's uh, pretty much it, uh, what I have on key services, why I think they're <laughs> useful, because uh, we had the tools all along to do what they give us and more, okay? So as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you have any questions or again, as I said in the beginning, if you think there is something crucial that I missed about Keyed Services that they bring something to the table that I'm just not aware of, please leave it in the comments section. A big and special thanks goes out to all of my Patreon supporters. You help me make these videos. And if you are supporting me on Patreon, you can get access to the source code for this video and all of my previous videos. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good day.